Hello, this is David Hill with Tech Dive TV. This is a day in the life. Now, I'm a Trekkie, or a Trekker, depending on your perspective. Um, I've loved Star Trek since, I don't know, the early 70s. Um, I even made a Star Trek movie when I was in high school, which unfortunately is now lost. But in the early 90s, I went to Universal Studios, and they had the ability for someone to go ahead and be in a Star Trek movie with the actual Star Trek characters of the original series. So I did that, and I wanted to show it to you now. I guess I look a little younger in this because uh, it was in the early 90s, and I was much younger then. So I hope you enjoy it. It's uh, my Star Trek movie. Have a good time. Hello, and welcome to Universal Studios Star Trek Adventure, courtesy of Paramount Pictures. I'm Gene Roddenberry, and some of you may know me as the creator of Star Trek. The episode you're about to see is a first. It's the first time guest stars have ever played the roles of the captain of the Enterprise and the Vulcan science officer. We'll now give you a peek at the rehearsal session that went on between our guest stars and their two directors, William Shatner and Leonard Nimoy. Emotion is the key. You, 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 you must let the audience know that you are the captain of the ship. The trick is to remove all traces of emotion from your performance. A Vulcan's actions are dictated by pure logic. And remember, the, the captain Vulcan is the most important role in the story. The captain? The Vulcan? Come on, Leonard, it's the captain that makes things happen. It's his story. Bill, get serious. The audience watches the Vulcan. Stop. This bickering is pointless. It is most illogical. Not bad. I'd say they're ready. What about you, Leonard? Indeed. I think it's time to, to boldly go, go where, where no, no man, man has, has gone, gone before. before. Medical log, stardate H707.2. Dr. McCoy reporting. The crew of the Enterprise is busy readying itself for an ordeal that I'm sure will prove to be trying. A Starfleet training mission. Below us on Earth, Captain Kirk and Mr. Spock are attending a conference at Federation headquarters, which makes them unable to help supervise the new graduates. But at least I'm not alone in this endeavor. Ahura, Chekhov, Sulu, and Scotty are aboard too. And you couldn't ask for better instructors than that. Ah, uh, Dr. McCoy. The graduates are requesting permission to beam aboard. We're ready, Dr. Captain. Beam us up, Scotty. Medical log supplemental. Now we'll see how these graduates respond to real training. Welcome aboard the Enterprise. Graduates, you are expected on the bridge. Now that our new captain and his fellow graduates are on the bridge, I, I can feel my nervous stomach acting up. I have to keep reminding myself that this is only a training mission. I am Captain David Hale. I am pleased to serve as your commander. And I am Science Officer Trish, reporting for duty. Just what we need, another Vulcan. Mr. Zulu, ahead, Warp Factor 1. Aye, uh, Captain. Captain, there is a vessel approaching. It's a Federation ship. Sir, they're not responding to our communications. Fascinating. They either can't or they won't. Very insightful. <sighs> the Enterprise! Kirk is on that ship! I can feel it! Enterprise targeted, sir! Prepare to fire!
She's raising shields. Better luck you face this, sir. Raise shields quickly! Fire! Scotty, damage report. They knew right where they hit us, Captain. We're dead in the water. Greetings, Enterprise. I am Kral. I want you, Captain Kirk. Wait, you're not Kirk? No, but I am the Captain. You? Captain? <laughs> Not try my patience. Where's Kirk? <clears throat> Kirk is on planet Gamma Alpha 4 in this star system. You will beam yourself and one other crew member aboard my ship. Then you'll accompany my warriors down to that planet's surface and be warned. If I don't find Kirk, I'll blow your ship across the galaxy. <laughs> what in places are you two doing? Mr. Chekhov, you have the con. We're beaming over. Scanning Enterprise now. What is the captain doing? I don't know. I thought Kirk was at Federation headquarters. <laughs> Enterprise. So, Kirk is in fact at Federation headquarters. Good! <laughs> First, I'm going to kill this would be captain with my bare hands. <laughs> and then, I'm going to destroy Kirk and Federation headquarters. <laughs> Not while I'm holding this photon detonator. What? One minute and counting, Crawl. 59, 58, 53. Crawl, give me your coordinates and I'll beam you to the Enterprise. No. Priority message from Federation headquarters, Doctor. It's Captain Kirk. Put him through. Jim. Bones, the conference is over and it seems we've made some progress. The Klingons have agreed to a ceasefire. Detonation in 30 seconds, sir. Your timing is as good as ever, Jim. Bones, what's going on? No time to explain. Enterprise out. Put me on screen. Crawl, you've got to listen to me. Your people have signed a ceasefire agreement with the Federation. What? Another ploy? You have to believe me. Now beam aboard the Enterprise before it's too late. 15 seconds. These aliens speak the truth! Trust them! No! I need those coordinates, Crow! It's now or never! Transmitting coordinates now! No! Beam us over! didn't blow. But what about the photon detonator? It's not real. It's a gag gear from Janet. Not regulation, Captain, but most effective. Well, I'll be. Medical log supplemental. The Starfleet graduates have certainly proven themselves far better than I could have possibly imagined. The Federation has reached an agreement with the Klingons, which hopefully, in time, will mature into a peace treaty. Crawl will be turned over to a Klingon military court for sentencing. So, all in all, I'd say this mission was a complete success. Well, Captain, what now? Mr. Sulu, ahead warp factor one. Sounds logical to me. Hi, uh, Captain.